So now I can say good morning again to you all. Um, we attended, there was a bunch of us that attended our conference meeting and um, became dementia friends. So when I get, I should already have it done, but I haven't gotten it done yet. But th we took a picture at the end, all holding our signs. So I'll put it on my Facebook page so that you all can see it. Um, it was quite interesting. There was a lot of things that I learned that I didn't know before. Some of the things that I have kind of done without realizing that I was doing the right thing by, you know, changing the subject quickly or finding an interest of something that they're interested in so that that person doesn't continue to flounder and wonder what's going on. But it was quite an interesting thing. So if you ever have the opportunity to go to a session, um, I, I, I think it's a good thing to go to. Um, if nothing else, just to make you aware of maybe um, somebody around you. Not, not Usually we don't necessarily recognize the signs ourselves, but people around us do. So anyway, this week on Tuesday, we're going to be celebrating an anniversary with Paul and Sandy. And Paul's not here, but happy anniversary anyway. Um, it'll be, I'm sure it's a, a great thing to celebrate. I know that most times things that I see, um, it's always fun to, even if you, all you do is say hello and happy anniversary to each other. doesn't have to be a big to-do after a few years, but um, ours, our, our ninth was not too long ago, so, um, which would have been, I don't even know, in the 30s or 40s or something if we'd still had our spouses from before, but it's still very meaningful to have an anniversary. Thinking of Thanksgiving, Thanks for things. Thanksgiving is only a little more than a week away. Um, it's actually a week from this coming Thursday. So it's November 28th. Um, maybe you've heard on the radio a few places are, are thinking, are helping you think of things that you're thankful for. So if you have some things that you're thankful for, don't be afraid to thank whenever it is that you happen to think of them. Because sometimes by the end of the day, if you pray at the end of the day, you might forget what you were thankful for at the beginning of the day. So if it pops into your brain, go ahead and thank. Um, I don't think it's a problem. On that day, we, there will be a meal served at Trinity. It's serving. We're serving from 11 to 1, and it's a free will donation with everything going to the food pantry. So... Um, It'll be a, it'll, it, I'm sure it'll be a busy day. They always anticipate that there's lots of people co that come. So um, it'll be my first year experiencing that. And, and they kind of halfway expect, even if you're not a, a, a called pastor there, that kind of be there and wander around and help out and do whatever. So I'll be there wandering around and helping out or doing whatever. So there it is. Um, and then Advent will be beginning on the Sunday after that. Next week is Christ the King Sunday, which is the last official day of our church year. And then Advent begins on Sunday, December 1st. So um, the winter is coming. I have memories of the first Sunday of Advent. We, we had a blizzard, maybe more than once, and had to call off church. So how weird is that, that in two weeks we could have a blizzard? I don't know. Who knows? But anyhow, I'm hoping not. I'm, I'm okay with snow not coming yet, but I hear it's in the forecast for possible flurries or at least a few things um, in the next week or so. And Colorado Springs have had their third snow day in a row out there, so I have pastor friends who have been called there, and um, they post on their Facebook, well, we have another snow day today, and so I'm just going to sit around and read my book and knit and crochet or whatever it is that they do. And so how fun for them. But I'm like, okay, so three days, the snow could be really high. But if it's like other places in Colorado, maybe it melts right away. I don't know. But anyhow, um, anything else that we need to remember? Because Advent is coming, that also means the Christmas program is coming. And there's Christmas things that are coming and all of that and remembering that it's not just about gifts and holiday parties, but it's also about the coming, whether you're celebrating the first coming or the second coming of Jesus, our Savior. 
Let's take a quick moment and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We stand for the confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 4 of our first hymn, O Day Full of Grace. O oh, day full of grace that now we see Appearing on earth's horizon Bring light from our God that we may be Abundant in joy this season God shine for us now in this dark place Your name on our hearts emblazoned O day full of grace, O blessed time Our Lord on the earth arriving Then came to the world that Light sublime, great joy for us all retrieving. For Jesus, all mortals did embrace, all shame and despair removing. For Christ bore our sins and not his own. When he on the cross was hanging And then he arose and moved the stone That we unto him belonging Might join with angelic hosts to raise Our voices in endless sea Please stand. God came to us then at Pentecost, the Spirit new life revealing, that we might no more in death be lost, this power over us dispelling, this flame will the mark of sin. And bring to us all true healing. We continue on page 203. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you.
Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word. It saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. Pour out your grace and make us whole, that new life may begin. Have mercy on us, Lord, make sin and shame depart. Renew us with your saving power, create in us new hearts. Glory be to God in heaven, peace, goodwill to all the earth. Mighty God of all creation, Father of surpassing worth, we exalt you, we adore you, we lift high our thanks and praise. Saints and angels bow before you, here on earth our songs we raise. <clears throat> Glory be to Christ forever, Lamb of God and Lord of love, Son of God and gracious Savior, you have come from heaven above. On the cross you died to save us, now you reign at God's right hand. Hear our prayer, restore, forgive us, in your promise firm we stand. Holy One, we now acclaim you, Lord alone to you we call. Holy One, in faith we name you, God most high yet near to all. Jesus Christ with God the Spirit, in the Father's splendor bright. For the peace that we inherit, glory be to God on high. We pray the prayer of the day together. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I think you read today. I don't know if you knew that or not. There you go. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since Ashes first came into existence. But at that time, the people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall live, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting content. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever, word of God and word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 16, which is found in the bold print. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my God, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I shall not pour out drink offerings to such gods. Never take their names upon my lips. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my help. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart aches. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. 
Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forever and more. For death and Our second reading today comes from Hebrews 10. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never be taken away with sin. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected all time for those who are sacrificed. And the Lord and the Holy Spirit also testify to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will hold, put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sin and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us, through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have great priests over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to be together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Hallelujah, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us. Speak until our hearts are stirred. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing for the good news that you the Holy Gospel according to the 13th chapter of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Kids, you want to come up? William, are you hiding? Maybe not. I haven't seen you guys for a while. There you come. Let's go. We're going to sit on this side today. Come on. You can sit here. You remember these guys? 
Yeah, come sit by them. It's okay. You want Dad to sit in the front pew? Okay. He can do that. There you go. Sit right up here. You got a Duluth, Minnesota sweatshirt. Cool. Did you go visit there? No? You just have a sweatshirt? That's always fun. And and you guys, oh, you're not decorated too much. Oh, you do have something on your shirt. What does it say? Janesville. Oh, well. Okay, then. You go to Turkey Valley and you're cheering for the Janesville guys? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway. Did you hear in the lesson today about things falling down and coming apart and breaking up and not being there anymore? Did you hear me say that? Yep. And there's going to be wars and earthquakes and all kinds of stuff. But then Jesus said, don't be afraid. Yep. We don't have to be afraid because the end isn't here yet. Now, it may come down the road someday, probably, but not yet. So we always have the hope. The hope that Jesus gives us, because we know that Jesus says you have hope, then we know we can grab onto that, because Jesus never lies. Never tells us a falsehood. Now, I don't have the, the right lesson for that today, but what I do have is the lesson that talks about Jesus being our servant and never, ever lying. And what did Jesus do to prove that he was a servant? Yes, he washed the disciples' feet. Have you ever washed someone else's feet? No. Have you ever done something that would be considered being a servant? Like take someone their dinner or clean up someone else's house or rake someone else's leaves? Did you ever do that? No. Did you rake grandma's leaves? See, you, you, yep, see, he knows how to be a servant too. And I know you've done that. I'm pretty sure you've done something to be a servant. Did you sweep out the garage? Yeah. Okay. See, there you go. I could, I finally can think of a few things that probably you've done. So this is the example that Jesus did so that we know that we can do servant things for other people. Yep. Because Jesus loved all people. He, it didn't matter to him how they were. So we are to serve one another because we love them. Jesus loved us so much that he died for us. That was in our lesson too. That was in the gospel or the, the second reading that Verna did. Jesus died for us. He only had to die one time to take all our sins away. That's a pretty good thing, right? Yeah. And because of that, we always have forgiveness of our sins. It's something that we need to remember always. I was going to have us play follow the leader, but I think maybe we're running short on time a little bit. So we won't play follow the leader. But in that in that reading also it said not to follow people who say that they're Jesus. Just because somebody gets up and says, I'm Jesus, don't believe them unless you can see that they, all the things that they do are just like what Jesus does. Right? Okay. So let's have that one and this one. And William, I think that's only one. There you go. Let's play, pray really quick. You ready? Repeat that. Whoops. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to die for us so that we can have forgiveness of our sins always and forever. And also to teach us how to be a servant. Amen. So I have the suckers and the fruit snacks. Which one do you like? You want the suckers? Okay. I'm going to just let you take them right over there and figure out which ones you want. Okay. Do you want sucker or do you want fruit snack? Okay. You can go there too then. I'll let you go. And you guys pick out whichever one you want. And then just leave the bag. Leave the bag there. Okay. Whatever color is your favorite. Grace and peace to you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, my. No wonder I can't see. The gospel today reveals 
kind of a back and forth conversation between Jesus and his disciples. It starts out when they first come out of the temple, and then it eventually goes for when they are sitting up higher on a mountaintop or a hilltop or whatever, and they're looking out at the temple. These little exchanges that Jesus has with his disciples. And it's usually questions that the disciples are asking. Some kind of a conversation that takes place. And, and sometimes I think the disciples get more confused than they were when they first began to ask the questions. So one of the disciples marveled at the stones that were adorning the temple. The big, huge stones that are piled on top of each other. And Jesus indicates that those stones are going to be cast down. The story, then, centers around the part of the Jewish life that's very interesting because it centers around the temple. Jesus came out of the temple. Now his guys were with him, of course. Clearly, he and his friends have been worshiping there. Ooh, that's better. During their, doing their appropriate duties as good Jewish people, they were there to do their prayers. Jesus came out of the temple, and one of his disciples said, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. The temple. The temple was a beautiful place. In ancient Israel, it is believed to be the house where God dwelt, the place where the, the actual God lived there. That's what, they, that's what they believed. The temple represents God's presence in and among the people of Israel. God's house in Jerusalem. And it's a place that is built representation of that very kingdom that Jesus has just said was coming, has arrived, and is very near to us now. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. The temple represented to the Jewish people God's permanence, God's promise, and God's stability among them. And it was really, really important to them. Because they were people who were held not necessarily as captives, but definitely under the rule of the Roman authorities. So the temple was a place of community and identity and gathering where they could go to still be Jewish people while they worshipped their God. So it was very important to them, and the, all of the enemies knew that. So if they ever really wanted to make a, a statement to the, to the Jewish people, they just tore down their temples, which they did frequently. But to back up just a little bit, to start with some history, last year, now I'm not, I'm not thinking that probably you'll remember this, but last year when we started in Advent, we started with the chapter of Mark 13, this very same chapter, so we started there and we ended there. During the year, we went off on a few tangents with John, and we had a little bit of Matthew now and then, and we even had a little bit of Luke on occasion, but we've stuck with the majority of the time the chapters of Mark. So I don't know if you remember back when you were studying the books of the, the Bible, but the Gospel of Mark begins just like it begins. It's rather abrupt. In the first chapter, there's no nativity. There's no Jesus is born. There's none of that. It just starts. Mark was very short in his writing. It's the shortest book of the four Gospels. And in his book, he starts to talk about John the Baptist. And then finally, Jesus appears on the scene. And Jesus says, Almost the very first thing that he says is that the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. It's quite an interesting book. Some of us don't really like it very well because it's always too short. There's really not a lot there. you got to really dig to get stuff out of the gospel of Mark. But that's the point of Mark, that the kingdom of God has come near. That's the main point throughout the whole book of Mark, that everything wraps around the expectation of the time being fulfilled and the kingdom of God has arrived, that it has come near. Now, if I'd have heard Jesus back in, if I was living then, in those centuries ago, 
I would have been really confused because I'm a little, still a little confused, and I'm still, and now I'm living now. Because I would have thought, the kingdom of God has come near. Hmm, really? The time is fulfilled? What does that even mean? I don't get it. So I'm not even one least bit concerned that the disciples couldn't figure it out because sometimes we can't figure it out either. It sounds mysterious. It sounds wonderful. And yet the kingdom of God is about to break loose in the earth. It doesn't feel that way. It feels like we're still living in the same regular place where the people at that time were oppressed by the Roman Empire. Their religion was put upon by sometimes their people weren't allowed to go into the temple to worship the way that they wanted to, who don't understand us. There's no freedom during that time. They felt like they were being slaves. They were poor. They were sick. They were lost. They thought that God had abandoned them. And the people in the gospel were definitely wondering, where is this promised kingdom that supposedly has come near? So over the last year, Mark has supposed to have answered that question for us. In all the stories he tells in the pages of his book, Mark revealed that the mystery connects the, ful the fulfillment, the leap between the known and what is to come. It's the story of God's suffering son. Even though he never talks about Jesus being born, at least at the beginning, not like Matthew, who goes through all of the ancestry and from Abraham, you know, 42 or I think it's 42 generations it takes to get there to finally find that Jesus is born. Luke, in Luke 2, we read that chapter, those chapters almost every Christmas Eve, or at least something similar to those, where there was a tax and they had to, Mary and Joseph had to go to be counted, and, and so they arrived and there was no room in the end. That's Luke's version of the birth. John didn't do a birth either, but Mark didn't do one at all, really. The Gospel of Mark is about suffering almost all the way through. It sometimes even seems like a very gloomy place to go. And we've been in this book for the last year, going from one hard story to another. Stories full of frightening things, of loss, of demons and disease, stories of people not understanding who Jesus is or purposely un misunderstanding him, or even those who want to kill him and try to figure out how to do it, and then those who do. So Jesus is the one who suffers this whole time during this book of Mark. And Jesus said, nation will rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be famines. Things are going to be tough and difficult especially for the marginalized people. Chaos is going to be experienced everywhere we look. But in the midst of that apparent chaos, Jesus brings us the words of hope, that last sentence in the gospel. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. It's sometimes easy to forget that this reading doesn't end with the gloom and doom part of it. It actually ends with that hope. The narrative part that we can say, that's not the end. We know there's more to come. Jesus seems to be speaking about that hopeful future that includes his sal the salvation that we receive because he died. And we all know and we've all experienced the physical pain that women endure while giving birth. However, the most powerful forces of pain take place. Birth is the result. And most times, the new life is celebrated. Therefore, it seems like these words were meant to bring that message of hope that we need, especially to the people who are feeling crushed or controlled. The times that, will cha that change will happen, and it's going to be radical and disruptive. The structures might collapse, and it may even seem like physical ones collapse. They might be the stones and walls that have kept and continue to keep certain individuals from realizing their full potential. 
But in our current time, the words of Jesus should bring comfort to our church. You, the church, especially those of us who are listening and hearing the words. It makes sense that Jesus would warn the disciples not to be led astray by those who would claim to come in his name. It's tempting to cling to anything that promises a foothold at times when we feel that everything is out of control. And while our context is radically different from first century Palestine, our realities have been rapidly changing too. Just in the last four years, think of what we've done in the last four years. Increasing wealth disparity, climate change that's reaching the red zone, the rise of COVID-19, whether you believe that COVID-19 exists or not, we definitely know that something happened because people got sick. A lot of people got sick, and many, many, many died. It's increasingly challenging to find a foothold on how to respond, what to do, and what will save us. A pandemic can bring out the sense of detachment and anxiety in the world, and we've noticed an increase in that too. People are very anxious, wondering who we are and who and what do we believe in. Plus, how is that belief practiced? How often is worship accomplished? How often is a commun being community practiced? Some places are still having problems getting people to come together to worship. We all need to hear the gospel, that good news that God is always about the business of making all things new. The good news of the presence of Jesus might almost sometimes seem like a fictional story that we maybe just can't quite grasp. Especially if you perceive that we're in the middle of a crisis or if we're in the middle of some disaster. We hear reports of disasters all around the world. The gospel reminds us that there will be something to look forward to. Some help, some hope that we can hang on to. Not to be led astray by others who are claiming to be the Messiah that cannot save us. We need to look to Jesus. We need to be ready for when God's presence will shine through the whole earth like a light that never goes out. And the glory of God will cover everything. When there's going to be no more tears. When God will live in every human heart. When the new thing that God's cre God is creating is upon us. Creation only happens when one thing transforms into something else. So endings can give way to new life. Just as a seed needs to die in the ground in order to sprout into a plant. And Jesus then leads us to these new things, so we can always follow our Jesus, our Savior, our King, our Messiah. Amen. Hymn 624, Jesus Still Lead On. Jesus still lead on till our rest be won and although we be cheerless we will follow calm and fearless guide us by your hand to the Hey!
becomes patient and enduring. Show us that bright shore where we weep no more. Jesus still lead on till our rest be won. Heavenly leader still direct us, still support, console, protect us till we safely stand in the promised land. <clears throat> Please stand as with the whole Church of Christ we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O God, in the washing of water, you set us free from the power of sin and death. Unite all the baptized in the covenant that you have made with us, as we strive for your justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. By your merciful might, you sustain all creation. Stir us from complacency with the harm we inflict on the earth, and urge us to adopt sustainable ways of life that protect and restore our planet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With a selfless power, you protect all who take refuge in you. As nations rise against nations, defend all who are displaced or, or affected by war or violence. Empower all people and nations to pursue peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In your presence, you give fullness of joy. Care for all whom joy feels distant. Be present with the persons experiencing depression, anxiety, addiction, physical illness or mental illness. Bring them healing and wholeness. We especially pray for Pat as she continues to grieve for Wayne. We ask your blessing on all the doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers that work to help those who need that help. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Through the years, you have gathered your church and this community for worship, fellowship, formation, and service. Enable us to look beyond the walls of our building to perceive where you are calling us forward. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember the saints and angels who delight in your everlasting presence. As their lives inspire ours, provoke us always to love, holding fast to the confession of our hope in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please remain standing as we receive our offering. Praise and thanksgiving, God, we would offer for all things living you have made good. Harvest of sown fields, fruits of the orchard, hay from the mown fields, blossom and wood. Then will your blessing reach every people.
freely confessing your gracious hand. Where you are reigning, no one will hunger. Your love sustaining showers the land. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, these are our portions, and it's your cup. You offered yourself in love for the world. You died for our sins. And in this time, you nourish us with your life. Fill us with your abundance, that we may feed the hungry and welcome the stranger, trusting in your name. Amen. Gathered now into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>